All right, what is up? Welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you my process for building the best website possible for a small business. It's going to be based on a real project. I'm working right now with a Canadian private catering business. This is going to be their website. So you're going to get to see the exact process that I use and behind the scenes content interview with the clients, interview with the customers and how I prepare to build a website and then how I actually build it. So a lot of stuff to get through. I'm probably going to break it into two parts. In this video, we'll cover the preparation side of things, how to get to the point where you're ready to go ahead and start building the website and how to do that stage best as possible. So if you have any questions, let me know below, hit like, hit subscribe, and let's jump straight into it. So in today's video, I'm building a website for a private catering business. They're based here in Edmonton, Canada, which is where I am. Right now, this is actually the place that we're gonna set up and do some recording, take some photos, and also some interviews with the client. But in this video, what I'm gonna do is cover the whole process of building this website. It's not just a website as well for this business. There's a promotional video, photos, I'm helping them with branding, and some other parts of their marketing plan as well. So it should be a pretty cool video. I'm gonna show as much as I can, and let's get into it right away. All right, so the first part of my process is just always figuring out as much as I can about the business. So this is John here behind me. He's starting to do some prep work. I'm gonna start interviewing him in a few moments, but basically the principle here is that when you're building a website, before you get into the design, before you start planning out your pages, etc., that you take the time to understand the business. So I want the best results possible from the websites that I'm building. The best way to do that is know as much as possible about the business that I'm building it for. All this information is gonna help me a lot later stages when it comes to designing the website, because really it's a sales system. So the more I know about how to sell John's business, the better I can make that system and the better I can design the website. So my first stage with this, sitting down with John, understanding all about his business and just getting as much information from him that I can use myself later. All right, so the first part of this is interviewing the client. The client is always gonna know more about their business than you know about it. So with John, he knows about cooking. I know about websites. If I wanna build a website that's gonna help sell his cooking services, I gotta get that information directly from him. So this is where I always start with a new website project, getting as much information as I can from the client, asking tons of questions about their background, their unique advantage when it comes to selling their services, what they know about the industry, what they think their ideal client might be looking for, things that we could add to the site that might help sell, things that we should address, that you know, concerns that people might have when it comes time to using a service like that any sort of question, it's always gonna change per industry. So with this project, it was possible to do this in person, but this is something that I did for years, solely through email and phone calls. So don't worry if you can't go visit a client in person, you just have to do up the questions that you wanna ask through email, or get on a phone call and go through that process with the client. The important thing here though, is you do that stage first because you're gonna need this information as a starting point to know where to go. The client is gonna know the most about the industry, the most about their own business. So that's the thing that you wanna start with first and that's gonna give you the best direction on where to go with these next stages that I'm gonna show you. So that is it for the first stage, interview the client, get as much information as possible, learn all about their business, about the industry, about their background, and what they think that their ideal clients are gonna be looking for. All right, so section two is market research. I wanna see what's going on in the niche, going on in the industry, and see what others are doing well, and what they're not doing so well. So there's two different parts of this. One, I'll search locally. So with this business, it's in Edmonton. I'm gonna search and see what the local competition is, what they're doing, how the market's responding, what things are going well for them, what things could be improved, and just see what the general situation is. Then what I'll also do is I'll look a little bit wider. So I'll look maybe nationally or internationally and see what other top people in that industry are doing in different cities. So for this example, I might look at private catering in New York or in San Francisco, see what those companies are up to, what's working well with their websites and with their sales systems, what can I use, and then look at the other areas as well, what's not going so well, what do I wanna avoid happening with this project? So for this, you can look directly on the business's websites, but you can also go to things like Google reviews, Facebook reviews, Instagram comments, and see what people are saying. So what are the customers, what's their feedback, what things do they enjoy, what things do they not enjoy, what are some negative comments, what are some positive things that they got praise for. Those are things that are gonna be hugely valuable when it comes to designing the website. Knowing what clients want, knowing what they appreciate, and knowing what they definitely didn't appreciate. Also with this project, I was fortunate enough to sit down with one of John's actual clients, so I got to get direct feedback from an ideal 
customers. So I asked them a bunch of questions all about, you know, what would be going through their mind when they're choosing to hire someone like this, what things might motivate them faster to make a purchase, what things might hold them back or that they'd have to resolve before going ahead with a sale. So really, really valuable information. Of course, if you get the opportunity to do that, that's worth it as well. But a lot of the times you can figure pretty much all of this out from talking directly to the client and from researching the market. So that is it for point number two, research the market along with interviewing the client. This is going to give you a really clear idea of what is going on in the industry, in the niche, and how you can build the best website and what should be on that website to get the best results. So our third and final stage is what I like to call collecting assets. Assets, it's not a Jason Bourne reference. Find out what kind of local assets we have in place there. Put the asset on standby. Let's activate the asset. Assets on scene. Tell me when the asset's in the nest. So for me, when I'm referring to assets, I mean the content that's gonna go on the website. Things like copywriting, images, graphics, promotional videos, reviews, headshots, logos, all the stuff that we're gonna to need to get this website done. I wanna collect as much of that as possible before I get into the design stage so I know what I have to work with. Now with this particular project, I decided to fly up to Canada and do this in person. I took a promotional video, I did photos, I got to interview the client and his customers, we talked about logos, we talked about branding and design, but that always isn't an option and it doesn't necessarily have to happen either. I've done a lot of jobs remotely where all of this was done through email and on the phone. So how it works in that case is you'd simply ask the client what they have, you look at what you're gonna need, and if there's a gap between those two different things, you go about figuring out how to close that gap. So if they don't have enough good photos, you might look into, can they hire a photographer? Is there other photos that you can use somewhere else? Is there free photos online? If they don't have a logo or graphics, is that something that they wanna do on their side or do they want you to do it or for you to outsource it? So you simply look at what is currently there that already exists and then what you're gonna need and you just go about filling that gap and making sure that you have the best content as possible. At the same time, if what they previously have isn't good enough, don't feel like you have to use it. So obviously when you're building a new website, you wanna do everything as good as possible. If they have some content from the old website that's okay and some content that's not so good, just focus on the best content. It's much better to go about finding new content, new assets, than rather be forced to use something that isn't already working. So my recommendations for this stage is to get creative, look at everything they have, make sure that you've gotten all the different assets that the business owner has, also look at things like their social media, their Facebook, have they ever had a YouTube channel? Is there any customer taking photos out there? Is there free images or videos online that you would be allowed to use on the website? So get creative and make sure that you have the best content possible. So that is it for our three points. Once you've interviewed the client, you've researched the market and you've looked at all the assets and how you can get the best content possible for the website, we're now ready to move ahead into the design stage. So I'll cover that in the next video. We'll go through my design process, what assets I had to work with, and how I get the best results possible using those assets. So I know this is just a quick overview video. If you do have any questions, leave them below. If you're interested right now, I'm putting a course together on all the different stages of doing this with a lot more detail. And I've actually added in the client and the customer interviews as well, and different extra bonuses like that. So if you want to check out the links below, the course is there, and also some free resources as well. That is it for this week. I'll catch you in next week's video.